there, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, another great bite-sized event webinar uh, in the Masterclass series. Today, we're talking about accessible events. Uh, let's get stuck in. I'm Linda Tillman. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of Tillman Group and the founder of Revents Academy. Uh, you can learn more about what we do um, and the team at tillmagroup.com.au or reventsacademy.com. So these bite-sized sessions are designed to be quick and just refer you to other information and give some high-level insight into what to consider under these various topics. Um, today, we're going to look at what does accessible events mean? Why is it important to have an accessible event? Things for you to consider at your event. So a few practical tips um, for you to consider, and then I'll share with you some useful tools um, and some places to go for further information when planning your accessible event. Now, access at events, and when we talk about accessible events, it's actually referring uh, to people beyond those that have a physical disability. Um, so it's not only about physical access to buildings, <clears throat> excuse me, for wheelchair users. You also need to consider things, for example, such as access to written information for those that have vision impairments and also access to public announcement for announcements for those who are blind. So there's a whole range of things you need to consider when we're talking about accessibility. It's essentially looking at an event that is accessible to all. It is very important today that your event considers how it is accessible to all um, because around one in six, so around 18% of people in Australia, or that's around just over four, so 4.4 million approximately, have a disability. So it's a large percentage of our, large percentage of our population. And these people enjoy festivals and events just like everybody else. Under the law, you also have a legal responsibility to prevent discrimination against people with disabilities. And complaints of discrimination could actually result in costly court proceedings and rulings for your events. So not only is this a good thing to do, it's actually um, critical and a must do for your event. And the other important factor is that when you make your event accessible, it actually benefits everyone. And that includes other attendees, um, you know, people making deliveries because there's better access into the event, people with heavy baggage, you know, families that have got young children, you know, those with prams, um, and even people that just have an injury. Uh, they would normally be able to access without an issue. But if you've really considered some of the things that we're talking about today, your event is actually more enjoyable by all attendees. One of the most important things when you're looking at making your event accessible is to start thinking about it early. This isn't something that you want to be reactive on. This isn't something you want to be leaving until the last minute and then go, oh, we need to make our event accessible. Um, if you can actually consider the needs of your attendees um, at the earliest planning stages, so all of your attendees, what are their needs? If you consider them early in your planning stages, then you've got a better chance of making your event genuinely accessible. And that's going to reduce the potential for future problems. Another thing to do, um, and, and I've seen this work really well actually, is to um, invite people with disabilities into the planning of your event. So if you have a steering group or a committee, uh, you could actually include the view of people with disabilities by inviting some to join the group. So it's really important when you think about, you know, making your event accessible that in the very early stages, even doing your strategic planning, when you're brainstorming about the event, think about all aspects of your event and how you can make it accessible for all types of attendees. So what I wanna do now is just share some things for you to think about. 
first of all, you need to think about your venue, your event site. You know, is it a public space? Is it an indoor space? Obviously, depending on what type of venue you have will determine um, what you need to consider in terms of making it accessible. Um, often, if you're just hiring an indoor space, then they will have, um, you know, accessibility plans and um, they would have already considered a lot of things. So you just want to talk to them about it and consider how you can actually build on what they've already got. If it's an outdoor public public space that's not typically used for a festival or event, then you may have to put a little bit more effort into thinking about you know, how you make your event site um, and the venue of your event accessible. So you want to consider things like entrances, um, lifts, ramps, any corridor widths, they all need to comply with the Australian standards, which you can access online. You need to make sure that any automatic doors um, to at entrances are available and functioning. Uh, ensure that your accessible bathrooms are available and that they're not cluttered. You know, we often see them used as storage rooms if they're not, you know, seen as critical to an event. We don't want to see that anymore. Uh, choose a venue that can be easily accessed by public transport. Make sure you provide some parking spaces close to the event for people with disabilities. So you can see how this also impacts on your site planning. You can designate small areas close to, if you've got a main stage, um, a show ring, um, any kind of feature area where there'll be um, a lot of entertainment, you can actually designate small areas close to that area for use by people using wheelchairs or people that have mobility challenges. You need to also check that the acoustics of the ven venue are adequate. So remember, we're not just talking about people um, in wheelchairs, we're also talking about people that, you know, have hearing impairments um, and seeing and visual impairments as well. So also check the acoustics and also consider wayfinding materials. So that's your signage. How do people find their way around your event site or your event venue? How do they identify where the toilets are? You need to make sure these materials are simple and easy to use by all. The other thing for you to consider is transport. So transport to and from the event. Um, so if, if you are planning to provide details of public transport options, so train stations, bus services that run near the venue, then you should also find out how accessible they are for people with disabilities. And you wanna make sure that you share this information with your attendees. So on your website, in your marketing collateral, um, you need to make sure that you're actually sharing this information. If people get a, um, a post-purchase um, communication from you, so they might receive an email to say, hey, thanks for purchasing tickets, here's all the information. Don't forget to also include this information um, for people that require extra services around your event. Uh, you need to also allow drop-off points. So this is an area where cars, taxis or coaches will actually drop off passengers. Um, you want to make sure that it's as close as possible to the entrance of the venue. And you also need to check that there's a curb ramp at the drop-off point so that it can allow uh, those in a wheelchair to get from the road to the entrance. So just always thinking about these things, access, access, access. Car parking, as I've said, um, make sure you allocate some car parking. So if you have your own car park, then make sure you allocate some spaces um, and reserve them for um, people that have disabilities. Um, and then don't forget about going home. So think about the arrangements for leaving the event, especially as we know, um, when there's big crowds and long queues. It might not be possible for some people with a disability to stand for long periods of time in a queue. There may be arrangements you could actually put in place such as seating or using stewards to let people know when their transport is at the front door. Um, so offering those services, just thinking about these, you know, different needs for all different types of people. Now, you also need to consider accessibility when you're looking at the promotion of your event. So if you do promote your event on a website, which most people do these days, then you want to make sure that it's accessible and compatible with a range of different hardware and software that people with disabilities um, use to access electronic information. 
You can actually look at um, ensuring your website complies with the web content accessibility guidelines, which you can access online. Um, and just something to keep in mind is generally PDF documents aren't considered accessible um, and they shouldn't be the only form um, on your website. So often people will have, you know, download a PDF program, download the registration form as a PDF. You need to think about these things because sometimes they're not accessible to all types of people. Uh, you should provide alternative contact details. So, you know, email, telephone number, um, you know, contact form on your website. So some people with disabilities re will require one or another of these to use. And if you can give options and that's, that's good for everybody really. Um, but you should also consider, depending on your audience, offering a telephone typewriter number for deaf people um, or anybody that may have a hearing or speech impairment. You also need to think about your written material. It needs to be available in alternative formats. Um, so you wanna consider things like braille, large print, do you have audio um, and a lot electronic um, versions of all of your written material? And you wanna make sure you're using appropriate language. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, you know, if, if you're really, serious about making your event um, accessible and welcoming people with disabilities, then you wanna communicate um, using the correct language. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the other thing to consider is ticketing, booking and the registration process. So it's not just when people get to your event, you also need to make sure that all of these stages of your event um, have considered how they are accessible. One thing to do is ask. You know, ask your attendees to advise of any accessibility requirements when they're registering, because then you can you can make adjustments um, as part of your event. So it could be part of you know booking a ticket or the registration process where you ask some key questions, and people are able to give that information. You want to make sure that digital registration forms and programs are accessible. And I've pretty much just talked about that in terms of your written content and the idea of, you know, PDFs aren't always accessible. Uh, ensure that guests and participants can register or book for the event in a number of different ways. So that might be by phone, by email or online. Um, and make sure if it's online or through a third party booking service that it's also accessible. And there's a lot of tools for people to make things accessible online these days. So it's quite easy. You just need to ask the questions of the online provider. And the other thing is don't forget about after they've booked. So, you know, generally after somebody purchases a ticket, books to attend your event or registers to attend your event, then they will receive some kind of confirmation correspondence that says, thanks for your tickets, here's a copy, and gives them a bit of information. That's a good, good opportunity to provide information about accessing the venue, um, which will include, you know, accessible parking, general parking, public transport, drop-off points, you know, all of those different things. It's going to make it um, easier for those that have those requirements to actually make their plans. And I also encourage you to consider, if you don't already, um, and you're a ticketed event, is to offer companion cards. Um, and this is a really good way to show your support for all types of people at your event, particularly people that have carers. Um, so this is where those that have um, a carer or a companion, they're actually allowed to um, come and attend your event at no cost. And you can see here on um, the Victorian State Government website, there's a whole section on companion cards. So you can jump in there and have a look. And that's a nice little selling point for your event as well. Now, the other thing is sound, lighting and other technology. Um, so consider things like, you know, booking an Auslan interpreter and allowing space for them. 
So make sure there's space for them to be in a well-lit area and that's clearly visible to the audience. I worked on a food festival a couple of years ago and it was fantastic that they had Auslan interpreters in the cooking demonstration marquee. So there was a they knew that they had a number of um, people that had hearing impairments attending the event and they were able to offer Auslan. They got such good feedback on that. Um, if you're offering videos or there's video as part of your event, then look at how you can integrate captions, avoid strobe lighting and flashing lights, um, consider providing a hearing loop, um, provide a wheelchair ramp to the stage. So you also want to think about any of your presenters or performers, um, you know, they may have disabilities as well. So it's not just about your attendees. So think about wheelchair ramps to the stage and make sure that complies with Australian standards and also things like adjustable height microphones if they're required. And just a few other things you might want to consider to make your event accessible. Ensure any information that you're providing around your event is accessible. And I've touched on that when we've talked about promotion, ticketing, registration, et cetera. But really important to um, make sure that all information you provide is accessible. Uh, provide a variety of meal options, and that includes meals that don't require utensils. So those simple things like sandwiches and simple things to eat. Uh, also think about training for your team your staff, your volunteers. Disability awareness training um, is available and can be accessed through different um, resources. And what that means is that your team are aware of how to um, service people with a disability and how to meet their requirements so that you can deliver a good experience for everybody coming to your event. And another thing you might want to consider is to have a dedicated sustainable event coordinator as part of your team or your committee. Um, and you can call it what you like. I've just labelled it sustainable event coordinator because it could include um, you know, that person might take on responsibility for ensuring your event's accessible, um, it's environmentally sustainable, and it's socially responsible. So they can have all of those kind of responsibilities under that, um, under that particular role. Now, what's the best language to use? As I said, if you're making the effort to make your event accessible, it's really important to make sure you and your staff and your volunteers and the signage that you use um, uh, using appropriate and consistent language. So these are just some things um, to consider. So rather than disabled toilet, use accessible toilet. Same with parking, accessible parking. Same with entry, accessible entry. So just starting to use that language. And then when you're referring to people, so a person with a disability rather than a disabled person, a person who uses a wheelchair rather than someone confined to a wheelchair, and a person who is blind rather than a person who suffers blindness. And, and I guess that's just a bit of etiquette um, around the appropriate language to use in your communications um, and, and all of your information around accessible events. Now, there's plenty of resources available online. Um, there's the Australian Network on Disability. Jump on there, have a look. They've got news, events, training, resources. Um, the Accessible Events Guide for meeting and event organisers, that's more customised to corporate style events, but it's certainly relevant to festivals and community events as well. Um, and the other organisation I encourage you to look at is Accessible Arts. So they have a resource section on their website and it's got a great suite of checklists and all other things for you to um, customise and use for your next event. Well, thank you very much uh, and good luck with your upcoming events.